Nicole Rose Design. Today we will be doing a tutorial on how to take an ordinary masquerade mask and turn it into something extraordinary. I will begin with showing you how to coat and seal the base in glitter. Yay, glitter! Afterwards, the real fun begins, where I'll show you how to combine various shapes, sizes, and colors of rhinestones to create an elegant, eye-popping, dramatic design. Let's get started. Begin by picking a mask base that you like the shape, size, and fit of. I decided to upcycle an old mask of mine for this project taking additional steps to strip the old paint off. To avoid such work, just purchase a blank mask. For your materials, you'll need your mask and something to support it. For example, I'm using a sewing hem, but a rolled up towel and a nylon will work just fine. Next is your glue. I'm using E6000 Fabric Fuse. This low odor option sets clear when dry and comes with a precision applicator tip. Remember to shake it before you start and have an area where you can set it down on its side, like this plate to catch any drips. Now let's talk tweezers. Test a few pairs to pick which ones work best for you by practicing picking up your crystals. I find that a pair with little resistance to close is best to avoid having your hand become too tired. You'll need a small dish with water, some paper towel cut in half and folded. This is to rinse and remove any glue residue that builds up while you work. I've cut about four pieces in half and set it aside. Finally, make sure that all of your crystals are organized and easily accessible. It is best to use shallow dishes and even lids in order to make it easier to pick up the smaller stones. For this project, there are four large accent stones and four colors of round rhinestones, each with multiple size options. Many options in sizes, shapes, and colors assist in creating a dynamic and natural flow to your design. This also makes it easier to adjust when facing overcrowding and spacing issues. Now let's go back to prepping the mask. You can use the same glue for this step. Be sure to gently score or sand before applying the glue. Using a paintbrush, coat the mask in a thin, even layer. While the glue is wet, sprinkle an even layer of fine grade glitter, tapping off any excess. Let this dry overnight. Once dry, seal the surface with a clear coat spray paint. Make sure to do this outside in a well-ventilated space and allow to dry for four to six hours. Let's get blinging. You want to lay a line or dot of glue about the same width or diameter of the crystal with a three millimeter depth. When laying the glue, if you're new, only lay a line about three to four inches long at a time so that it doesn't dry before you finish. For the border, I chose two colors in two sizes, one small clear and one large rainbow clear. The two sizes create a more appealing look and the two colors add dimension. When there is a center or focal point, that's generally where you want to begin. Using your tweezers, gently place the crystals along the glue line, making sure not to push down too firmly, as you need to keep a cushion of glue under the stone. Work from both ends as you place the crystals. Once all of the crystals have been placed, carefully go along and lightly tap each stone down so that a small amount of glue wraps up around the edge of the crystal. This will create suction for better adhesion by pulling down the stone as the glue cures. Moving on, I will do the same for the outside border of the face, adding accent stones to the corners and nose points. Before moving your project around, to prevent any shifting, let the glue set for about 15 to 20 minutes after each section. If things shift, just reposition and clean up the area with a damp towel. Now it's time to play around with petal design. The mask was shifting, so I grabbed some pins to anchor it in place. Play with the placement until you have a good idea of what you want. Get creative! I'm using plenty of large accent stones, and what I've learned is that you need to let the glue firm up for about 10 to 15 minutes to avoid shifting. Just move on to another area while you wait. For my petal design, each have a center, middle, and outer section. I want to highlight each section with a different pattern. Remember, try to mix up your pieces and add more depth. I chose the center as the main point of interest, then proceeding with a unique mid border and ending with a more subtle framing effect for the outer section. For a more cohesive design, I chose to repeat the pattern for each petal. Once the glue has set slightly, 
make sure to periodically hold the mask up to check the placement and that you are happy with the results. While working on the petals, I lay down a generous amount of glue for the center of the face to be able to firm up and continue on completing the midsection of the petals. When starting on the face, I begin with the center where I placed the glue earlier. I applied an enormous amount of glue in order to hold my bold in your face large crystals. Or would that be on your face? Hmm. As you can see, the face of my mask already has a beautiful set of design lines that I can follow. You can use a fabric pencil to draw on your own design. I highly encourage that you do this to avoid many mistakes with placement moving forward. Always begin with your large accent crystals. This will help you plan your spacing. As the glue firms up, I continue working on the petals. I want the front set of petals to pop, so I use the same pattern as the border for the eyes and body. Afterwards, I place the larger stones on the face, working on both sides to evenly achieve a balanced look. For beginners, I suggest that you apply the crystals on each side at the same time as you go. This will make it easier to achieve symmetry. Unless you have an asymmetrical design, well, then you can go all willy-nilly about it. Okay, maybe not willy-nilly. You should still have a plan. If you do overdo it with the glue, just like I did, just use your tweezers and remove any major excess around the crystals. As you can see, I decided to focus on one side of the mask first. Sometimes this may be the only way as the curve may be too steep causing slippage. But in this case, I just got bored, so I decided to complete the last two borders on the petals. I chose to use very tiny rhinestones in the same color as the glitter, providing a cohesive finish and adding more texture. Sometimes, taping your tweezers closed and dipping the end in a tiny bit of glue to create a sticky point makes it easier to pick up tiny crystals and place them on your project. Woo! That was fun! Okay, time to finish the other half of the face. Achieving symmetry and balance can be difficult. Turning your project upside down or working on it by working through a mirror can let you be able to see where any adjustments need to be made. Well, that's it for today's adventures in Rhinestone Dreamland. Now you have all the tools that you need to be able to create magical pieces of wearable art for yourselves. Until next time, nerds, sparkle on.